Namaste. How's it going? Last time I've talked about the hands and how the subtle sensations we feel on them can assist us in stilling and suspending the mind. Right, for today, let me talk about the feet and the rest of uh, the lower regions of our body. This position I'm sitting on right now is called the Siddhasana. For the ladies, it's called the Siddhayoni Asana. This is not about how to set up and work on the alignment. I've given a few tutorials about that. You may want to take a look at those lessons so you can appreciate the technique. So this is more of the significance. All right. So the Siddhasana, amongst the many sitting asanas of Hatha Yoga, is a powerful technique. Actually, it's for me, it's the most yeah, powerful Yeah side by side maybe with a Padmasana, but Padmasana could be quite intense for the joints. So Siddhasana is quite doable and it is as powerful, it is as energetically efficient or effective in what? Purifying our nadis. So how can a sitting asana like this serve as deep uh, you know, energetic or even spiritual function? All right. So the heel there, the bottom heel, is slightly uh, massaging you know, the muscles yeah, behind the generative organs and, and against the generative organs, uh, the peren perineal nerves. All right. So for the men, it's behind our scrotum or behind our testicle and they don't want to be pressing. Actually, it's um, just uh, a mild uh, pressure. Yeah, it's a mild pressure just for the heel to lightly touch that point and then that mild pressure because so sitting on your hips, yeah, will be enough for you to stimulate the nerves there. And then the nerve endings there. So the Muladhara Chakra, the Kandanadi there, the Muladhara Chakra, Sadhishtana, and the Manipura Chakra, those are uh, uh, energized and stimulated you know, when we practice the Siddhasana or the Siddhayoni Asana or the Pabhasana. All right, so the Muladhara Chakra is the origin yeah, of the three fundamental nadis, Ida, Pingala, and the Shishumna Nadi. Yeah, and then once the nerves there become stimulated, activated, it will send the yeah, electrical information, nerve impulses, yeah, to the brain, yeah, and this will pave way for the what, the activation of the uh, subtle energy, the purification of the nadis. Think about like from the hips, you know, the electricity travels up to the brain, and this will cause the stimulation, the purification, the cleansing of the nadis. All right. And then normally when we're sitting in a siddhas, now we do breath exercises, right? And that will reinforce the cleansing method. So the combination of the sitting position, you know, together with, of course, the alignment of the spine and the technique of channelizing and controlling the breath is so, they are so effective in what? Cleansing and purifying, purifying the nadis. All right. Now, the feet, yeah, the feet and then the toes and then all the bones and the joints we hold on our feet and the legs are stimulated as well. Yeah. Uh, they are all connected to the organs of the what? Digestion, elimination, yeah, our adrenal system, yeah, the function of our creative energies, yeah. All of this are activated and uh, uh, promoted you know, when we are sitting uh, on the Siddhasana. You know, because there we are you know, using you know, the, the toes and using the joints, using the feet, using you know, the, the, the ankles. And yeah, literally, you know, every part of the legs and the limbs and even the hips and the low back are activated you know, when we yeah, practice the Siddhasana. And as I've mentioned in the past tutorial, aside from the hands, our feet hold the most number of bones, the most number of joints, and of course, the most number of nerve endings. And these are all connected, you know, the visceral parts of our body, our internal system, especially around the bottom part, yeah, the Muladhara Chakra, the hips, very, uh, I, I say, uh, active. Yeah, when we're sitting, active in a sense that it's involuntarily active. You don't want to be clenching. You don't want to be doing some other techniques there. The sit in the siddhasana, and then the pressure coming or the mild touch coming from the heel there. Yeah, uh, uh, stimulate the nerve endings or the the nerve channels of the muladhara chakra, and this will send electrical information. Not only that, yeah, because you're sitting tall, and then eventually or inevitably your hips will open and that paves way for what the activation the stimulation of your swadhisthana chakra 
yeah yes and then the breath regulation yeah the pranayam techniques yeah very effective in what well um increasing yeah, the digestive fire and the agni of the manipura chakra and then these three bottom chakras are the fundamentals of energy channeling yeah you can't go straight to the heart you can't get straight to the throat you can get straight to the forehead or even the shashvara chakra there yes there are techniques but they are not safe you need to sort out the foundation first this is the foundation the kandanadi i've mentioned about in the previous tutorial the kandanadi is the foundation it's the lingam of the hips and then the kandanadi holds three important uh, foundation of our energetic astral and even spiritual cosmic anatomy muladhara ashwadishthana and the manipura chakra only when they are you know, steady when we're able to establish our practice on them in them and through them yeah you know, we can rise our techniques up here 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 and then here so this is the foundation and the see that's an alone yeah the books that say Siddhasana alone is yeah, more than enough already yeah, for us to attain yeah, that high pranic absorption. However, yeah, so this doesn't happen overnight. Yeah? So this will require flexibility of the ankles, the feet, of course, the stability of the core, the lower back, and the openness of our hips, yeah, and the awareness of the breath for it to happen safely and meaningfully because you're holding this for long durations during your pranayama. It's not just like a one-time sitting position yeah you need to hold it and sustain it so you don't experience any heaviness no pain no discomfort in the knee so you can hold it sitting while meditating maybe or when you're doing your your pranayama or chanting right and after the siddhasana after that duration of time as pres prescribed by your teacher untangle the siddhasana and then you might do some what mudras uh, mudras are ways for us to channelize the energy from the hips to the brain so you can do what the viparita karani mudra so you can reverse the flow yeah, from the hips to the brain or you can do some other techniques as well like for example the um, shambhavi mudra or you can even do the nabhu mudra with the tongue uh, touches the heart palate or the Kachari Mudra, where the tongue rolls back all the way to the back of the uvula, and that will yeah, allow us to open the up, uh, up, upper pathway, so whatever we harness and produce and we flow from the bottom regions of the spine goes up to the chest, yeah, through some extension of the spine back then, and then just some awareness of the upper regions, throat, yeah, chanting, tongue exercises, eye gaze, yeah, and then from there you lie down the Shavasana and then just allow it to drift and open good siddhasana um, why is it so essential and important effective when you practice the hatha yoga method i'll catch you in the next one have a lovely day namaste